Hello, and today we're looking at building the laser blast effect in OpenTunes. Hello ladies and gents, and today I'll be answering a viewer's question of whether you can use the radial gradient colouring option in OpenTunes to make a laser gun blast effect. Now this is going to be fun, I've been looking forward to doing this for a few weeks now. So this question came in from Henry SCP07 and followed up by the last engineer after my tip about using gradient colours on vector levels. Follow the link above for a detailed look of how to add gradients to your vector levels. He asked if we could use the radial gradient effect to make a similar effect to one he saw in Alan Becker flash tutorial, and I'll give that link in the description below too. He was having trouble using the radial gradient to show as an oval and not just a circle. And the simple answer is yes, you can. So I thought, rather than showing just that one effect, I'd recreate the whole tutorial in OpenTunes. As usual, I've added some time markers in the description, so you can jump to the part you're interested in, or jump back to repeat any parts that you need to watch again. And it's taken me a while to get to this question, so let's just crack on and see what we can build. OK, so I've got a blank project and scene here. I'll just add a vector level. And we'll just draw a very simple laser gun in here. OK, so that'll do just fine. So we'll just extend that to last for two seconds, just to give us some time to work with this. So the next thing to add are the laser echoes themselves, and that's the three radiating ovals. So what we'll do is we'll create one of them, animate it, and duplicate it to create two more. And we'll draw a circle on there, colour it in using the gradient tool, and then edit that. So let's just get a circle in here. Size doesn't really matter too much at the minute. OK, we'll add a new colour to fill it in with, and we'll use the radial gradient, which is this one here. If you want to see a more detailed description about the gradients, just see the link in the description below. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just fill in this circle, and then we'll change the colours. So select on the second colour, and we'll make that a bright green. And the first colour will change to be just white. But as we want to see through the centre, we'll also change the alpha. So let me just show you that. If we move the circle over the gun here, and you can't see through the centre. So if you change the alpha down to zero, you can now see through that colour. So we'll just adjust the gradient by changing the size of the radius in the centre to make it larger and making sure the smoothness gives us the nice gradient that we want. And if you click away you'll notice that you've still got the black outline. So if you select the circle and all you need to do is click colour zero and then that's removed. In reality it's replaced with colour zero which has zero alpha but it has the same effect. Okay so let's move this back to where we wanted it. So the first problem if you just resize using the select tool the fill still remains as a circle, and I can show you that if we go to the settings and bring down the smoothness and change the radius. You see it still remains a circle, whatever size you change the circle to. And what we want is the gradient to also resize, so you've got the same size green all the way around the edge. And the way that you do this, if I bring this back to a circle, there we go. The way that you do this is you use the Animate tool instead of the Selection tool. So if I choose the Animate tool and we change to Scale, and if you click and drag it just changes the scale of both X and Y at the same time. So if you hold the Control key you can now change the scale horizontally and vertically. So if we change it to be narrower, slightly taller there, you'll notice that you've now got the same thickness all around the outside. So let's just put this radius back to be larger and with more of a transition between it and the centre. OK, that gives us more of what we're trying to achieve. So let's just move the position to the left hand side. OK, so there's about fine. So we want this echo to move to the right hand side and then fade out. So we're going to do that using the animate tool and feature of the palette, not by changing the drawing itself. So what we need to do is extend this one drawing 
and then we'll apply the animation to it. So I've chosen to last 15 frames, just a bit less than one second, just to see how it goes. On the first frame is where the echo starts, so we move to the final frame, and I will lock the north-south option, make sure we're on position, and move the echo to the right. And you'll notice this added a key on frame 15 with a line from frame 1 up to it. And that shows there's some interpolation between the two animation frames. So if we just drag along there, you'll see it moves from frame 1 through to frame 15. So if I select on the gun layer, and then when I right click at the top of the timeline, I can choose set auto markers, and it'll set the length of the animation to be the number of frames in that layer I was previously selected on, which is the gun layer. So as I zoom out, you can see the start marker is on frame 1, and the end marker is on frame 24 here. Okay, let's take a look at that. So that's moving quite slow, so let's move it a little bit further to the right. If we turn on onion skin to show frame 1, it'll make it easy to see where we're moving from. And then we'll drag it over a little bit further. Okay, so we also want the echo to grow larger. So on frame 15, I change the position to scale. And again, we'll turn on the onion skin for this. On frame 15, we just need to scale this slightly larger. There we go, that's fine. So to view this quicker, we'll just change the end of the animation to frame 24 by moving the stop marker there. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, so we want to change the pace of the animation. And the best way to do this is by double clicking on one of the keys and you get to see the function editor. And you can see the key value that was set for moving left to right moves from minus 79 up to 53 with the values in between being interpolated. Now we want to edit this pace so we'll take off the other three sets of values and take a look at them on the graph. So you remove them by looking at the right hand side and unticking all the column headers apart from the one you want to see on the graph. So now I've only got one column on here, you can press this button at the top right and that shows you the graph editor. Now I won't go through all the features of this, it's quite a complicated piece of interface. But if you click and drag on one of the axes, you can resize the portion of the graph that you see. So you can see that the speed is fairly linear. So depending on what your default interpolation is in the settings, will determine the options you can change to on here. Now my default is set to a linear, so that's why it's greyed out, and I want to choose speed in and speed out. Now I've chosen that, you can see it's changed to a sort of an S-curve. With the key shown at the start and the end still, but now you've got these two drag handles. And if I click and drag the left one, to make the speed out roughly linear, and the top one, which changes the pace for the end, if I drag that to the left, it'll slow in to the end. Okay, so that gives us a nice even curve, we should make the echo come out quickly and then slow down at the end. So if we just close those two and then play that. An alternative to using the function editor, as Alan Becker showed in his tutorial, would be to add a key somewhere in the middle by moving to the right frame, pressing the key button and then adjusting the position of that frame. But there's no need to do that because we've got the function editor. So the final part of animating the echo is to make it fade out at the end. And to do that we use the animate feature of the palette. So all you need to do is to move to the frame where you want the colour to start to fade out. So I'll go to frame 10. And then if you go to the right colour in the palette, you can then add a key and adjust the colour and you can animate it over time. And pressing the key button doesn't show a key on the timeline, you just have to know it's there. So by pressing the key, that sets the current frame to be this colour. And then we simply move to frame 15 press the key again and then change the colour to what you want it to be on the final frame. So for this we want the green to be invisible so all we need to do is select the green colour and then change the alpha down to zero. And because there's now a key on frame 15 with the alpha at zero and one on 10 with the alpha set full at 255, you'll see the colour fade out. So to move between the keys to edit them you just select the colour that you know is keyed and you can press the arrows to the left and right of the key button and it'll move to the frames that have got keys on them. So let's take a look at that. So that fades out a bit too quickly for my liking. So what we need to do 
I select that color there, I move to the previous key, which is on frame 10. I delete that key and add one sooner. So to delete a key, you just press the key button and it removes the blue background and takes the key away. So let's go to frame seven, put down a key and then bring the alpha of the green back up again. Yep, so that's fading out. Let's see how that looks. That's better. Good, so that's one echo. So what we want to do is to duplicate that two more times. And you could just copy the drawing from the echo layer, copy the keys, move everything around. But on this layer, as well as the animated key showing the position of the echo, you've also got the hidden keys of the colors. It's easier if you can encapsulate that into one animation. And the way you can do that is to collapse the whole layer into a sub X sheet. And you do that by pressing this button on the toolbar to collapse. If you've not got this toolbar, simply right click anywhere on one of these headers and you can choose Toggle X Sheet Toolbar and then collapse here. The command is also in the menu under X Sheet, but it's easier working off the toolbar. Okay, so let's just hit collapse and it asks the question if you want to include any peg bars in the sub X Sheet. Now I haven't used any peg bars on this occasion, but as a matter of habit, I leave that turned on for the occasions where I do have peg bars. So just hit apply. And you'll see immediately that all of the frames turned purple and the keys disappeared. Now all that's done is wrap the single layer into a sub X sheet. And you can get to it at any time by making sure you've selected a frame in that layer and then clicking this button here. And you can see each frame and key and you can edit them and it'll be reflected in the parent. So that's the equivalent in Flash of creating a symbol. So if we just close this sub X sheet, which brings you out of it, and you can still see the animation running. So what we want to do is create two more. So what I'll do first is I'll rename the column. So I need two more layers to put the other echoes on. So if I select in the header and press the insert key twice, it gives me two new layers or columns as they're sometimes called. So all I need to do by clicking on this top bar to select the whole 15 frames, I'll then copy and then paste in the other two layers and then rename these. So the echoes happen slightly after each other. So as long as there isn't a frame selected in that layer, I can click that small bar and move the whole set of 15 drawings to the right. And I'll give it a two frame difference and the same for the third layer. Okay. So you see three of these moving and then fading out. And what I want is to have the three echoes slightly different sizes. So I could use the scale and position options to get the echo in the right place but I'll use the new mode called All and that allows me to use this outside button here to scale the echo down and then click anywhere in the white space and I can move that to the position it's needed. Okay, so let's move to the third echo and again move the position over, scale it down slightly, put it in the right place and let's see how that looks. I think they're too close. So again, the second echo, move it further away. And the third one, further away still. Let's see that. I think having a two frame gap was too much. So let's bring it back by one frame. And again, bring the key back at the same time. And let's see how that looks. Right, now they need to move closer together. So let's just move that in. Good, that's better. So next we want to add the static effect, and this is more hand-drawn. So we'll just add another vector layer. And all I'll do is I'll draw the static on each frame, moving outwards away from the ray gun. So all I did was to draw a flash from the center of the gun and had them moving outwards, away slowly and shrinking out to disappear. Just to give the rough effect of a flash when the laser went off. Fun. So the final part of the laser gun is to draw the actual laser ray itself coming from the center. 
So again, we'll add a vector layer for this. And what we'll do for this is we'll just draw a rectangle coming from the center, shooting outwards. And we'll add in another gradient, but this time we use the linear gradient. We'll change the main color to green. Let's fill that in there. And the first color, we'll choose white. but then reduce the alpha, as we did before. But first, let's take away the outline again by selecting the whole shape and clicking color zero. So let's take a look at the green color. That's fine. Okay, so we'll also change the shape. So the front of the laser ray can be slightly rounded as well. So the same as the echoes, we're not going to change the actual shape of the ray, we're going to extend it over a period and then move it using the animate tool. So we choose the animate tool first, we change the type to position, we'll leave the north-south locked because we're only moving left to right. If we zoom out and then on the first frame we can move it slightly which creates a key as you notice then on the final frame we can move it to the far right and then it'll animate moving to the right so let's just see how that looks now it's moving quite slow so I think 18 frames is going to be too much let's try 12 and again I don't know if you can tell but the laser itself is accelerating as it moves to the right and getting faster. And that's because the interpolation between both keys isn't set to linear. So if we double click on the key, and here are the ray keys, and all we need to do is to right click in between on the interpolation and change it to linear. And you see the numbers change there. So let's take a look at that. That's better. Pew, pew. So that's it. That's the radio gradient effect being used in combination with a few other techniques and features of open tunes to create a simple laser blast. Now this was too much fun to not show the laser blast in the natural animation, so that's what I'll be working on for next week. And if you've got a request for how to do something in open tunes, why not leave me a question below? And if it's something I can help with, maybe you'll be featured here next time too. And if you like this video, please like and share to help the channel. I've got a lot more open tunes tutorials on the channel, so why not take a look around now you've found me and see what else could be useful for you. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you subscribe to be reminded of future tutorials and animations. And I'll be back next Friday to show how I use the laser blast in an animation. And that's a guarantee.